how much do I need to retire at 60? Or, said another way, how much money do I need saved for retirement in my retirement savings accounts to retire at 60? Well, 60 is a great age to retire. You're over the age of 59 and a half, which means all of the IRS regulations on your IRAs and 401ks have fallen away. You've got Medicare starting in five years and you're healthy enough to enjoy retirement. You can travel, play pickleball, do whatever you want to do. But if you're thinking about retiring at 60 and you're asking the question, how much do I need saved for retirement to retire at 60, there's a few factors you need to consider first. The first factor you wanna think about is social security. When are you gonna claim your social security benefits? We're gonna do a quick example on the board so that I can show you why it's important to understand that first, and then we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of exactly how much you need saved to retire at 60. Now, social security is a huge decision no matter when you decide to retire. If you claim Social Security early at 62, when you're first eligible to claim Social Security, you will receive 70% of your full retirement benefit. If you wait to 67, you'll get 100% of your full retirement benefit. And if you claim at 70, you'll get 124% of your full retirement benefit. Now, you are allowed to claim any time between 62 and 70. And there's an easy chart on ssa.gov to show you what the increases would be between the age of 62 and 70. Or go to ssa.gov, create a social security account for you, look at your statement, and it'll tell you exactly how much you will get in social security benefits. But that is the first factor, and let me show you why on the board. Now, I've got a 60-year-old individual. They're trying to determine when they should claim Social Security benefits. And we're going to look at three distinct scenarios. We're going to look at claiming at 62. We're going to look at claiming at 67. And we're going to look at claiming Social Security at age 70. And I want to show you the difference in asset values just by claiming at different ages. And I want to kind of put to rest some of the claims that maybe claiming Social Security later is better? It depends. It depends on your individualized situation. When I run an EKG for a client, we're looking at all the different claiming ages to determine, is this the best for them? Is this the best for them and their spouse? Is this the best for them and their partner? And so what we're trying to make sure is that we're not making a blanket Social Security decision. So let's take into account a couple characteristics first. We've got a 60-year-old person. Their expenses at retirement are $45,000 a year, and Social Security at 67 is $28,000. $100. So these are just some averages across the United States. So we're going to look at claiming Social Security at 62, 67, and 70, and we're going to assume that we have $800,000 saved for retirement. Now, that's not how much you need to retire at 60. I'm just using that as a figure to show you when claiming ages and how much in assets you would have by claiming Social Security at certain ages. So let's look at the first example. We claim Social Security at 62. That means that for two years, we would need to take $45,000 per year off of our retirement savings. Now, we're not gonna put any inflation on our retirement savings. I wanna keep this really, really baseline and simple for you. So, $3,750 a month is what we would need off of our investments per month. We're gonna get a 6% annual rate of return on our money in the market. That means that this 800,000 is still invested. It's still making a rate of return. We're just gonna give it a simple rate of return of 6%. Now I like 6% because it's 2% behind the stock market average, which is 8%. Now it's 8% since about 
about 1950. It's higher than that if you look at the last decade, but I want to use a longer term average. And so we're going to go behind that. You can use 4%. You can use whatever percentage that you want. So we're going to claim Social Security at 62 in this first example. So between eight, between ages 60 and 62, we're taking $3,750 off of our retirement investing accounts. We're earning 6% a year. So from 60 to 62, our money grows from $800,000 to $806,357. So at 62, we turn on Social Security. Now, remember... Social Security at 67 for this individual is $2,800 a month. So if we claim at 62, it's only 70% of the full retirement benefit, which is $1,960 or 1960. That's a good year, right? So our expenses are still $45,000 a year. Remember, I'm not putting inflation. I just want to show you a simple way to look at this. So $3,750 is our monthly expenses. Now at 62, it's going to be less our social security of $1,960. So that means $1,790 is what's going to come off of our retirement investing accounts per month. So from age 62 to 70, we're taking off $1,790, earning 6% on that 806 in the market. At 70, we'd have $1,081,712. So we started at 62, taking Social Security. At 60, we had $800,000 in retirement savings. Over the next decade, we've grown it to a million. So that's taking it at 62. What about taking at 67, getting that full retirement benefit? Well, 800,000 in assets, our expenses are still the same, 3,750 and we're earning 6%. Between ages 60 and 67, our assets grow about $26,000 from 800 to 826.018. But then we kick on Social Security. So Social Security is $2,800 per month. That's our full retirement benefit. $3,750 is what we needed from our investments. $2,800 is what Social Security is. So now we're at $950 that's coming off of our retirement investing accounts. Between ages 67 and 70, our investments grow from $826 to $951,110. Okay, it's about $50,000 less than at 62. Now, let's go to 70. We're claiming at 70. At 60, we have $800,000 in retirement savings. $37.50 every month for 10 years, earning 6%. We're trying to get to that full retirement age, which Social Security would be $3,527 at full retirement age, 124% of our full retirement benefit. Between ages of 60 and 70, our assets would grow from 800 to 840,968. So about a $40,000 increase. Now the question always becomes which age is right to claim social security? Well, if you look at this, this is just a small snapshot, but it depends on your individualized situation. If we go to the next decade, now this person is single. I did a single individual. What I try to do as a financial advisor for a single individual is push them to the highest social security. The reason for that is I want the biggest amount of guaranteed income for the rest of their life because their retirement income is only on them, right? There's no other partner or spouse that's bringing in retirement assets or retirement income. So I'm pushing them farther down the line. Now, if the market goes down, we have sequence of return risk, meaning we lose money the first few years of retirement. So we're pulling off income from our retirement investments. The market is going down, which means we are draining our accounts quicker than we want. We may look at claiming at 62 to stop the bleeding on our retirement investing accounts, okay? So this is the first factor you wanna consider when thinking about how much do I need to retire at 60, Social Security. Now let's get into figuring out exactly how much you need to retire at 60. How much money do I need to retire at 60? Or how much is the minimum amount 
the least amount of money that I need to retire at 60. That's what we're gonna look at on the board because we're gonna try to get the least amount of money that you need to retire at 60. Now, I don't recommend going to the least amount. What I want you to do is use the least amount and shoot for much, much more. But I wanna show you how I calculate with clients what's the least amount or what's the number that we need to be shooting for to retire at 60 and we want a lot more. Now, we've got a 60 year old individual. This is a very simplified scenario. Keep in mind, this is very baseline and very simplified. And we're asking ourselves, how much do we need to retire at 60? Well, there's two things that we think about when we're thinking, how much do I need to retire at 60? The first, we think about the 25X rule. The 25X rule says, take your annual expenses, multiply those by 25, and that's how much you need to retire at whatever age. Now, for this example, it's gonna be at 60. So we take 25, we multiply it by $50,000. That's our annual expenses for this example. That means we need $1.25 million to retire at 60. Now, what the 25X rule does not take into account is Social Security, pensions, and inflation. Now, we're gonna take into account Social Security for this example, and we're gonna take into account a very simplified look at inflation. We're gonna get into more detail in the next video. But for this scenario, we're only gonna look at a simplified version of inflation. So 1.25 million is what this individual needs save for retirement to retire at 60, maybe. We're also gonna think about how long do we wanna be in retirement? And now that's a funny question. How long are you gonna live after you retire? No one knows, right? So we have to put a uh, asterisk by that question and we have to say how long do you want to live after retirement for this example we're going to use 100 so we're going to go from 60 to 100 for 40 years we're going to be in retirement so we've got a plan for 40 years of retirement income so that's where the 25 extra will kind of falls short because it's not count calculating in inflation social security and longevity so again very simplified 25 extra rule how long are we gonna live? 1.25 million, Social Security at 67. How much do we need? So let's look at this, and I wanna do it in sections. The first section is gonna be 60 to 67. So we're 60 years old, we've got $50,000 in expenses, and we're going to 67. That's when we're gonna claim Social Security at our full retirement age, so we're gonna get $2,800 at 67. If this individual were to go to 70, we need to look from 60 to 70, they'd get 124% of their full retirement benefit for Social Security, and we'd have to change how much we need saved. Now, again, we're gonna earn 6% rate of return in the market. Now, in order to get this calculation, I use an HB2 Plus calculator. It's a future value calculator. You can find these calculators on Google or in Excel, and you can do this for yourself. So between the ages of 60 and 67, based on the future value calculation, this individual needs $285,175 saved for retirement. Now, that is essentially at 67, having zero dollars left. I think it was like 50 cents left over at age 67. So it's not my recommendation to get the least amount. I just wanna show you where we need to start. So 60 to 67, 285,175 is the least amount that this individual needs saved for retirement to satisfy their expenses. Now, we haven't factored in inflation. Let me show you a simple way to factor in inflation. We take the $50,000 in expenses, and we just multiply that by inflation. So I like to use 3%. So 3.24 is the 108 year average for inflation. So I'm just gonna use 3% as a round number. So 50,000 times 3%, that's $1,500. So we're gonna take that $1,500, we're gonna multiply that by seven, okay? So we multiply that by seven, that's 10,500. So we're gonna say 50,000, times that by 0.03, that's 1500 bucks. That's our inflation 
for each year. We're going to multiply that by 10. Now, keep in mind, inflation is a compound number. So if you want to get even more detailed, again, this is a very simplified scenario. If you want to get even more detailed, do this on a yearly basis. So take 50,000, multiply that by 0 0.03, then take that number, which would be 51,500, multiply that by 0 0.03. You can do this in Excel, and that'll give you inflation for those seven years. But for this, we're gonna make it very simplified. So we take 1,500, we're gonna multiply that by 10, that gives us 10,500. So we're gonna add that to this 285. So 10,500 goes here, so add that to 285175. That means we need at least $295,675 from ages 60 to 67, for inflation and for our retirement expenses. So now let's do the same thing. We got to go 67 to 100. So we got to go a long time. Our expenses have inflated to 61,493. So that's 50,000 inflated at 3% between 60 and 67. We're going to start taking Social Security. So 33,600 is going to be our annual Social Security. So that means on an annual basis, 27,893 is going to have to come off of our retirement investing accounts, which comes to $2,324 per month. So that's what we need to live off of. So using a future value calculation, we need $400,379. Now, again, let's talk about inflation. Take the 61,493, multiply that by three. That's 18, so multiply that by 3%. That's $1,844. Now, let's multiply that number by 33 because we got 33 years, right? So from 70 to 100 is 30, plus three is 33. So that's 60,878. We have to add to this figure for inflation. So plus 400,379, we need at least 461,257. So that's the least amount with inflation added in. So we take it all together, 461,257, 295,675. Let's add those up together, 295,675. That means $756,932 is the least amount we need to retire at 60. Now, we're going to get more detailed in this next section in the next video, so make sure you watch to the end or watch the next video. But the least amount we need is $756,932 calculating in Social Security and inflation on a simplified metric. Now, again, I like to do a financial EKG. That's what we do here. It's called a Your Financial EKG to make sure that this is enough. The EKG also calculates in other variables that we can't do on the board, like taxes, like sequence of return risk, like historical market returns, and Big purchases are things you want to spend your money on, like travel, maybe a child's wedding, a new car, whatever, a home purchase. We can't calculate that in on the board. You would lose your mind. So we have to do that in the software. But if you're asking, can I retire at 60? How much do I need saved? 756000 is a good place to start. All right, how much do I need to retire at 60? Or said another way, how much in retirement investing accounts do I need to retire at 60 years old? So we're going to get into the detailed EKG today. We're going to look at how much do we need in savings to retire at 60 based on inflation, based on taxes, based on any kind of extra money we want to spend, maybe for travel, a child's wedding, anything. We're also going to look at historical stock market returns as well as a geometric 4% and 6% rate of return. And we're going to look at social security. So let's get right into it today. So we've got Drew Blackston, that's me, and we want to retire at 60 years old. We're trying to figure out how much in retirement assets we need to retire at 60. So we're retired 
Now, as you can see, we've got to fill in some things. So we're going to go through this together detailed so you can see the process for finding out exactly how much you need saved for retirement so you can retire at any age. So if you're trying to retire at 55, retire at 50, retire at 62, this is the same process that we go through for all of our clients to determine have you saved enough for retirement. So the first thing we're going to look at is Social Security. So Drew's primary benefit, we're going to look at 67 years old and his Social Security at full retirement age for this video is $2,800. Now, if he took it at 62, he would get 70% of his full retirement benefit. If he waited to 70, he would get 124% of his full retirement benefit. So we're going to look at 67 right there in the middle, getting 100% of his full retirement benefit. Now, from an asset standpoint, we don't have any assets yet because remember, we're trying to figure out the exact penny how much we need to retire. So we've got to have a couple factors filled in first before we can get that asset number. The first one is when are we going to take Social Security and how much that's going to be. The second factor we've got to look at is our rate of return. What kind of interest what kind of rate of return are we going to get on our stock market investments, on our retirement investing accounts? Well, let's assume a 6% rate of return. I've already got that plugged in. So we're going to assume a 6% rate of return on our investments. Now, from an expense standpoint, $50,000 is our annual expenses. So if we break that down monthly, it's $4,166 a month. Now, that's getting an average inflation rate of 3.24%. Now, what I love about the software is it calculates inflation on a monthly basis. So that $4,166 is going to get inflated for the next month. So you're going to have 12 months of inflation on those expenses. It's a 3.24% annual inflation broken down monthly. Now, inflation history... From 1914 to 2021, the 108-year average is 3.24. That's why we're going to use that. Now, we could be in a scenario where we have a 1960s to 1970s and 80s type inflation, but we don't know. So what we have to do is just work off of our historical averages, which is 3.24%. Now, what's wonderful about the software is you can plug in whatever you want. You can put 5, 6, 7, whatever you want to look at. Now, from a cash flow standpoint, this is where we add in vacations, purchases of cars, maybe a second home purchase, any kind of big expenditures that you're going to have in your retirement. Those can be one-time expenditures. They can be a decade of travel. It could be monthly expenditures, maybe added health insurance or whatever. We can add that into the cash flow. So we're going to wait on that for just a second. So let's go to retirement and let's look at how much do we need in retirement savings? Well, the current value says that we need $922,799 to retire at 60. Now remember when we did it on the board, we came up with $756,000. I said that was the least amount that you needed to retire at 60. Now, that's on the board. That's not taking into account all the different factors that the software is doing, which is why it's so important for you. When you're doing retirement income planning, when you're doing can I retire planning, you need to factor in everything on the outside. Whether you do that with me and we do an EKG or you're doing that with Fidelity Software or Vanguard or your financial advisor, make sure that you're getting a detailed retirement income plan before you step into retirement. So let's remember that number, 900, we'll just round it up. Let's say 923,000. So let's go back to assets and let's add in $923,000. So let's add in, first of all, let's put some bank money on here. So let's say we've got money in the bank and let's make that our 23,000. And then let's add in an IRA so that's an IRA and it's a traditional IRA and let's, that's money's in the market. It's at risk, meaning it can go up and down and that's gonna be 900,000. So that gives us an, our $923,000 at 60. So let's go back to our rate of returns. 
Let's add in a 6% rate of return, not on the bank. Obviously, that's not going to be a 6%. 6% on our IRA. Our bank's going to be at zero. Now, obviously, interest rates can change, but let's just say at zero for the money that's in the bank. So now we know we've got a portfolio weighted average of 5.85% because the money in the bank's not earning anything. The 900,000 is earning six. So we've got a portfolio weighted average of 5.85. So let's go back to retirement to see how we did. Look at this, at 99 years old, we've got zero dollars. So we did pretty good. We actually need about $43,000 more. That's because we've got 23,000 sitting in the bank earning zero. If we were getting a straight 6% on the 923, we would have made it. So now we need to go back. I asked the client, hey, is 99 at zero? Do you feel good about that? A lot of times people will say, yeah, I feel pretty good. But let's go back to add in some of the extra money we want to spend. So, hey, at 60, I want to travel for 10 years. So let's do some travel. I want to do this. I'm going to take an annual distribution. Let's do a $15,000 vacation. And let's do this for 10 years. Now, obviously, this can change. So that's why we want to have a flexible plan. But let's do this for 10 years. And yeah, there needs to be inflation on it because Inflation is going to be everywhere on airplanes and on hotels and on food. So we need to do that. And we need to take this money out of our retirement savings, which is out of our IRA. And we need to do travel, have fun. So let's save and close that. So we just added in a $15,000 travel outflow for 10 years. So let's go back to our retirement plan to see what that does. Look at that. It cut off a decade of our retirement savings. Look at this. We are out of money at 88 years old. We're at zero. Now we have social security kicking on at 67 still. That's the 2,800. Here's our $15,000 for travel and notice how it does have inflation. So at 70, it's actually $20,000 because of inflation on that money. Now I could have kept it at $15,000 and instead of going to Italy, I could go to you know, uh, I don't know, California or something, who knows? I just wanted to see, hey, if I wanna spend $15,000 a year on travel, I don't know where my grandkids are gonna be. I wanna go see them. If they're in Juneau, Alaska, or Bangor, Maine, or if they're in South Korea, I wanna go see them. So I wanna make sure I have this added into my retirement plan. So at 88, I'm at zero. Now we come back up here and we notice, okay, if we wanna do this kind of travel, we need $253,000 more in retirement savings or we need to average a higher rate of return, 7.56. So in this case, I would say if someone was close to retirement and they had $923,000 saved, I'd say, hey, listen, we need to adjust something. Maybe we drop the travel and we, and we don't spend as much. So let's go back to that real quick. Let's go to travel and let's just adjust it. So let's take it down to $10,000 a year. That's a pretty good trip, right? $10,000 a year. And we go to retirement and look, we've got to 91. So we're increasing our retirement expenses by lowering our travel budget. And we've lowered how much we need saved for retirement. So it might be another question where I ask somebody, hey, if you wanna do this travel, maybe you need to pick up a part-time job. If you wanna retire at 60 from your full-time work, maybe you pick up a part-time job. And they go, you know what, Drew, that's a great idea. How about we add in an extra $20,000 for working at the Home Depot. I said, okay, so let's add that in. Let's go to cash flow. Let's go to part-time work. We're gonna say we're gonna work at the Home Depot because who doesn't wanna work in the hardware store? I would. And let's do $20,000 a year. And where's my calculator at? $20,000 a year. So let's do this on a monthly basis because that's how we normally get paid every two weeks. So 20,000 divided by 12, that's $1,600 a month. And we're not going to make any kind of adjustments to that. And let's do that for the same decade that we want to travel because we're going to use this part-time work to help us travel. Okay. This is coming from a taxable external source. So this money is taxed. That $1,600 is the gross value. There's going to be taxes on that. And that's going to be to pay expenses. So this is going to help us pay our expenses so we can use our retirement investing accounts to travel. So we're going to save and close. We go back to retirement and boom, at 100, 
we have $36,751. So there's a way that we've solved an issue that the client was looking for. So obviously this is different from your scenario. Obviously you have different cash flows, different things you want to do, different asset values. But we have to look at what makes the most sense to help you get to retirement through retirement and protect your ability to stay in retirement. Now, the last thing we want to look at are taxes. For this individual, their taxes, remember they're in the state of Florida. I don't think I said that. So this person's in Florida, so there's no state tax. Now, for the year 2024, and I want to go two years, all of our money's in IRA. So everything pulling out is ordinary income. So for them, their gross income is $67,400. There's a standard deduction of $12,950. Our taxable income is $54,450. $41,000 is the base. We're at $4,808 over base. And then we've got some extra taxes. So our federal tax is $7,596, which puts them in the 22% bracket. Now, the federal effective rate is 11.27. So he's in the bracket of the 22%, but after the standard deduction, and really, depending on other expenses and things like that, he's in the 11.27 effective tax rate, which is really good. Now, what we might look at for this individual as they get closer to 60 is doing some Roth conversions, things like that to help them lower the taxes even more, okay? So, We've looked at cash flows. We've looked at market returns at 6%. Let's go to actually looking at sequence of return risk. So if we go to the market now, so over on the left-hand side, we've got our 6% rate of return. Okay, so our 923 are at 6%. Over on this side, this is market comparison. And I wanna use the year 2000 as our market comparison. Because the decade from 2000 to 2010 is the worst decade that I remember. I've been doing this 15 years. 2000 to 2010 was the worst decade. It was a negative three for the decade. Okay, now 1990 to 2000 was like the best decade that I was alive for. Okay, so let's look at the first decade, 2000 to 2010, because we had sequence of return risk twice. And what I mean by that is the market was negative for multiple years twice. So the first one was 2000, 2000, 2000, 2001, 2002. And the next one was 2000, 2000, 2007, 2008. Okay. So if you look at the market comparison, this person is actually out of money at 82 based on the decade 2000 to 2010. Now our scenario averaging 6%, they run out at a hundred. So we have to look at this and say, there's about a 20 year gap if we have some rough seas in the market. So you have to ask yourself, what's the risk I'm taking on my money? Because all of the money for this scenario is at risk of market loss. And so we have to do some investment scenarios. We've got to look at the portfolios. We need to look at how we're invested. And then we have to ask ourselves, do we want to lower our rate of return? And if we do that, we might have to do some other you know, more part-time work, we have to lower our travel. There might have to be some other adjustments to the plan if we lower our rate of return because we're worried about our risk. Again, there are so many variables that go into retirement planning, into the details. That's why you need an EKG. You need a financial EKG or a financial plan from your financial advisor, Fidelity Vanguard, somebody, call me, let's put this together for you. Actually, in the comment section below is a free download called the Checklist to Retirement. Download that, but that's how you get get in touch with me. Select the box that, yes, I want to visit you with you. And we can put this together because we need to look at all the different variables. You might be saying, Drew, I don't need to look at all these different variables. I don't need to think about all this. When you get on an airplane, aren't you glad that your pilot goes through his checklist every single time he gets on the plane? Not only does he examine the plane from the outside, but he gets in the cockpit and he pushes all the right buttons. He selects all the right boxes to make sure that your plane's gonna get from Phoenix, Arizona to New York, New York. Aren't you glad that he looks at every single variable every time he gets on the plane? And that's exactly what we do with our clients. We look at every single variable every time we get into the plan. So we've looked at the market, we've looked at taxes, we've looked at cash flow, we've looked at assets. Let's go back to income one more time because I wanna show you really two more things. The first thing is I wanna lower social security. 
Let's instead of taking it at 67, let's take it at 62. So if we take Social Security at 62, it would be $1,960. That's 70% of the full retirement benefit. So let's save that. Now let's look at what that does to the retirement plan. Remember, taking it at 67, with the travel, with the part-time work, we get to 100. We got $36,000. Look at this. If we take it earlier, we get to 100, and we've got $34,000 left over. So it's a $2,000 difference in our retirement assets to take Social Security a little earlier. So again, it comes down to personal preference. And it comes down to two with Social Security. Is this person married? Is there another partner? What's going on? And so Social Security is, again, not just a singular decision. It's a multifaceted decision based on everything else. So we're going to take Social Security early. And I want to adjust the assets just for a second. Let's do a lower rate of return. Let's take this down to 4%. So we're gonna take it down to 4% rate of return on our money in the market, and we're gonna take Social Security a little earlier. Now we're out at 88. So let's go back to income real quick. Let's jump Social Security back to 2,800. Now let's go back to retirement, still at 88. So if you are more risk averse, if you want to look at a lower rate of return throughout your retirement, then we have to look at how we're invested. We've got to look at other options. So there are so many variables when it comes to your retirement plan. So make sure that you are looking at all those variables and you need a financial EKG. Hey, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.